can't touch. And somehow, we've let them touch them. Way have we let them touch them. The Second Amendment uh, uh, itself has over 20,000 laws against it in this country. 20,000. 20,000 violations. And how did it ever happen that they received regulatory authority over God-given, untouchable rights? Because we've gone to sleep, and we have a lot of work to do, and we're going to take all these back. And remember the solution is a constitutional sheriff who will enforce the Constitution and put liberty first with us, with us working with him or her. There's about 15 female sheriffs in America that we will work with him. In fact, one of those female sheriffs is on the front of the book, and that's Sheriff Pamela Elliott from Edwards County, Texas. Now, I was going to be on the front of that book. It's my book. I can put myself on the front if I want to. But I fired me, and I put her on there. And the reason I did is because I thought it'd be a great uh, attention getter, an eye an eye catching attention getter, that a female is on the front. And some people say she looks like a kid because she looks so young. She is young, but not that young. She looks pretty young there. But Goliath is coming up behind her, and she's ready. She's not really that concerned because she knows that she has the upper hand. See, she's armed. And he's bringing a spear to a gunfight. <laughs> so we, we, we really intend for this to go so far with your constitutional sheriffs and with us backing them that they will stand against gun control. And they will stop them. Do you want to stop gun control? Have a constitutional sheriff that stops it. <clears throat> and he puts the federal government on notice. You're not going to come in my county and confiscate guns. Ever. You're not going to do it. Not in my county. If the people in this county want somebody else to be their sheriff, if they want some wimp to be sheriff, it's not going to happen. You know why? Because I took an oath that said I wouldn't do it. And I've heard Sheriff Clark from Milwaukee, and you've seen him on Fox News a lot. And Sheriff Clark says the same thing. I took an oath. Just because other people don't keep their oath doesn't put any obligation on me to go along with that. I'm going to uphold and defend the Constitution because that's what I promised the people I would do when I took my job. Some of the excuses that I hear, in fact, not all of them are in here, a lot of them are, but it, it's amazing what excuses I hear from sheriffs and other public officials as to how we can't obey the Constitution. Why? Well, because uh, the federal government with, will withhold funding if we do. We'll stop sending money to Washington, D.C., and then they won't be able to withhold it from you anymore. Okay? They'll withhold it from you. You withhold it from them. Where do you think they get their money? Stop sending it to them. And you know what? Seriously? No. Uh, Ted Cruz talks about yes. abolishing the IRS, which I don't think he'll ever do, or even if he got in there, I don't think that's not going to happen. But you want to stop it? Have your state collect all federal income taxes and all federal taxes from the state. Then you send on to them what you think you. they Who need, not what they say they need. And then that will stop that $19 trillion debt, won't it? And they'll have to follow the Constitution oh, yeah, in, in their right. uh, financial right. expenditures. Amazing how we have the power to do that. And I actually heard uh, a public official from Harney <coughs> County, I think it was the, the judge or head county commissioner or something. He says, you know, giving the land back to uh, the counties and the states, the numbers just don't add up, he said. The numbers just don't add up. What numbers is that? You know what he's talking about? We wouldn't be able to financially run the land here because the federal government has all the money. That's what he meant. They have all the money? The money that they're using, why can't you use that? Okay? Especially after you cut out all the middlemen, it'll be too much money there to do that with. But you see, these politicians and the people that we have in office today are so brainwashed into believing this corrupt system needs to be supported. I have a, I have a very solid question for you and all of them. Who is in charge of maintaining liberty in your county? Who's in charge of that? 
I want to know. Please tell me the constitutional lawful answer to that. Because most of these public officials... Give me a minute on that one, would you? Who's in charge of defending liberty in this county? What? Do you know what it's going to boil down to? They're going to ultimately tell you that they can't interfere or intervene on your behalf against federal agents breaking the law. Uh, the sheriff can't intervene? You, how about if I show you the evidence that that is absolutely not true? Okay, absolutely not true. He has a moral and constitutional and fiduciary responsibility to you to do exactly that. I know you're with me on that. <laughs> okay, so, as you know, I sued the federal government and won a case at the U.S. Supreme Court. That decision plays quite a big role in my presentation because Scalia, God rest his soul, wrote this decision and, perf and perfectly laid out an equation for liberty as to how we take uh, America back. And it's an amazing one. All dealing with a balance uh, of power, a balance of power between the states and the federal government. Do we have that balance of power today? No. So who's going to have to tip the scales back the other way? Do you really think there's any way that could ever be the federal government? And that they, only they, only the federal government can determine how far their authority extends. Only them. Do you know that everybody knows that's absolutely not true? Even them. But they want us to believe it anyway. So we'll leave them alone. Yes, my dear friends, we hope and plan for the day when our constitutional sheriffs will arrest federal agents for breaking the law in their communities. Yes. We believe that. <laughs> However, let me reiterate something that you need to understand. We do not advocate that you act carelessly and go do some sort of civil disobedience and leave, leave him completely out of it and you go and do something and you get in trouble, and you say, it don't matter, my sheriff's going to get me out of trouble. That's not the way it works, my friends. You need to respect and work with your sheriff before you go and do some civil disobedience, or before you wave the red flag at the light, okay? And you get the sheriff's support and assistance and appraisal before that happens, okay? Because right now, we're not, we're not running out there and and uh, with our guns and releasing all the uh, IRS prisoners, are we? And my brothers-in-law were in IRS prisons while I was sheriff. And they were over near, near uh, El Paso, Texas in prison. And they were found not guilty in court. Not guilty. They were looking at 40 years each and they were found not guilty by a jury of their peers. And I didn't form a posse, and I didn't form a militia, and I didn't run on that prison and get them out of there. And they were innocent. And there's no way I would have done that at that time. And there might be a time we can, but we, not, we need a lot more numbers on this first. And we want to release those people, and we want to put the IRS in, in its place. And is there anybody in this country, even the most liberal idiots that we have around here, that don't know and realize that the IRS has been a criminal organization for the past 60, 70 years? Probably since the, the day of its inception. And they've been political hitmen, and they've been used to commit crimes against the American people. And I'm going to show you a picture of a lady up here by the name of Jennifer Long that was, was an IRS agent. And she blew the whistle on them and all the crimes that they commit in fabricating evidence against American citizens who they knew could not financially defend themselves. You know why they keep track of your finances? Because they know how much you can afford to pay on their cheat sheets. And they'll cheat you out as much as they can according to your ability to pay. That's what they do. And they fabricate that. And she says they even break the law when they do that. And there hasn't been one of them that has gotten arrested or in trouble for it. And we're going to show you some interesting things here. You're going to be able to mix some of this up with 
some clips and stuff where we're making this a little bit interesting. I hope you don't go to sleep. It's not boring. I guarantee you this is not boring. Restoring freedom in America. And that's what we're doing. sound higher somewhere on that. Can you hit it on my computer? Yeah, go higher. Well, we'll leave it like that. Read the... Read the... Sometimes, thank you. <laughs> I hope you can get the sound up on the next one a little higher for me. But anyway, you, you saw this. Can you believe uh, anybody anywhere talk about the significance of the oath of office? And did you see the real significance? To the boss of America. You gave your word to the people of the United States. We are the boss. We, the people. First three words of the entire Constitution. You gave your word. To the president's boss. 
And this is so vital. The founding fathers required the oath in the, six, the Article 6 of the Constitution that all three branches would be doing what? Working together, not control. How is it that law enforcement, being part of the executive branch, thinks that the other two branches completely control it? Thereby negating the separation of powers. We always say, oh, we don't make the laws, we just have to enforce them. So we're servants and puppets to the legislature. That's not true. We are not. We are a check and balance on the legislature. Oh, we have to do whatever a judge tells us to do. That is not true either. I told judges no before. They're not my boss. We work together to do what? Uphold, defend, protect, and preserve the United States Constitution. All three branches doing that together with we the people, we preserve liberty. And that's what the founding fathers were concerned about. And that's why we got the untouchables, the Bill of Rights, and the Constitution. Next one. That's the requirement. That's Article 6 of the Constitution. Requires every public official in the states and the federal government to swear allegiance to the Constitution. Wow. Next one. State nullification. Talked about Madison. Madison talked about it and Jefferson talked about it. A great deal, by the way. Did I make up nullification? No. And yet so many people think it's such a radical idea. There's nothing radical about it. It's called enforcing the Tenth Amendment. Can I ask you another legal question? Who has the constitutional and moral and lawful duty to enforce the Tenth Amendment? Is there any way that's the federal government? No, that's a joke. It's a check and balance on them. And then we sit back and let them steal all this other authority because they pay us money that we send to them in the first place. It's absolute insanity. And we're going to vote more of those people in this year. If you think that sending another Democrat or Republican to Washington, D.C. is going to restore freedom in this country, I've got beachfront property for you in Omaha. Because it's not going to happen. And Patrick Henry said, I only know to judge the future, but by the past. And judging by the past, what is it gives you any hope that there's going to be any change? And we take back America in our own community. Stop donating to national campaigns and take care of Oregon and take care of your county. And start there again county by county, sheriff by sheriff, and state by state. That's how freedom and liberty will grow. We need you involved in that process. CSPOA needs county representation from Oregon, Oregon. Oregonians? Oregonians, thank you. I was gonna say ducks. But I, 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 hey, you know what? I'm probably the, the only one in Arizona that likes both the University of Arizona and ASU. I grew up in Arizona. They're both Arizona schools. I love them both. Always have. Uh, got recruited to play basketball at U of H, and I still like ASU as much. So, doesn't matter. So, yeah, good. He also argued, look at this. This is He's talking about Madison and Jefferson. He also argued that the state should refuse to enforce laws that they deem to be unconstitutional, not the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court doesn't make law. How do we know that the president and the Supreme Court cannot make law? Right after the preamble, it's Article 1, Section 1. And it says, all legislative authority, all legislative powers are vested in herein in a Congress. How much? All. That's 100%. President has no legislative power. Courts have no legislative power. Can they rule on something? Yeah. Does it get ignored all the time? All the time. My Supreme Court decision gets ruled, ruled uh, overruled and ignored. Not overruled, ignored all the time. You know who's supposed to be following my decision? Congress and the President. 
<laughs> sure they will. But I'm going to show you some of that too. Next one. Look at that word in gold. I love that word. It is a principle. It is a doctrine. Interpose. Interpose. Do you know what interpose means? It's just another way of saying interfere or put yourself in the way. Make it a messy for Goliath. And the good sheriff, the good constitutional sheriff, sees the possible or potential victim here, one of you. And the federal government's coming in, I mean Goliath is coming in, and it's just like in basketball. He puts himself in the way. And he moves, your sheriff moves. Just like in basketball, playing solid defense. He's not threatening. He's not shooting. He's not even going for his gun. He has it on, though. And he puts himself in the way, and that's exactly what interpose means. And you interpose. What does it say there? State legislature is duty-bound to interpose its power to prevent its people from being victimized by the federal government. That's way back in 1786. Way back. They understood human nature. They understood government. They understood how people lust after power, Hillary Clinton. And so it's crazy <laughs> that we don't get it today after all those years. Okay, next one. Okay, these are the two sheriffs that ended up at the Supreme Court on this case. The only time in history where sheriffs appeared at the U.S. Supreme Court in one. Do you think your sheriff ought to be a little bit curious as to what the case was about? And I'm going to share a little bit of that with you now. Next one. This is the Supreme Court. We have held, however, that state legislatures are not subject to federal direction. Did you hear that? This is the United States Supreme Court reinforcing the Tenth Amendment. How many people in your government, here in your county or in your state, know that? You, governor, you, legislature, you, county officials and county commissioners, you, sheriff, are not subject to federal direction. Now, in the Brady Bill, they were trying to even force us as best they could with threatening to arrest us. The sheriffs of America, they're going to arrest us if we don't go along and enforce the gun control laws known as the Brady Bill. It's in there. I'm going to show it to you. And only seven joined this lawsuit. Seven. I filed in uh, February of 1994. And then six other sheriffs joined the lawsuit. Six. So there's totally this up. One of you mathematicians want to tell me what 7 out of 3,080 equals percentage-wise? I'll bet there's at least three zeros in there somewhere. Okay. Next one. And this is Judge John Roll. Now, the two judges that really influenced this decision the most, Judge Roll was assassinated or killed during the Congresswoman Gifford's assassination attempt in Tucson back in 2011. He was killed. But look what he said. Mac is thus forced to choose between keeping his oath or obeying the act or obeying the law, subjecting himself to possible sanctions. Judge Roll was incensed by the arrogance of the federal government and Congress thinking that they could arrest sheriffs for failure to comply with their ridiculous gun control law. And you know that there was actually five Brady bills scheduled to be passed one year after the other until the entire Second Amendment was going to be gutted. Completely gutted and destroyed. You know the Second Amendment would have been gone or we'd have been in war to stop it. And we probably bought maybe 15 or 20 years of time on that particular issue because they're going right back to legislating the very things that we stopped. It's amazing. It's a, this whole case was so amazing. Never heard much about it, did you? Do you know that these six, these seven sheriffs did more to stop and repeal gun control 
than any congressman ever in the history of our country. And it's because we did something. Okay, the only thing I wanted you to see there is the acronym CLEO. This is in the Brady Bill. They call the sheriffs in the Brady Bill CLEOs. It's official. Chief Law Enforcement Officer. Isn't that amazing? Sometimes the federal government actually gets it right. And this is official. It's right there. So anybody wants to know where it says anywhere in any of our jur books of jurisprudence, the Brady Bill itself calls the sheriffs the chief law enforcement officer. Ha! They're so right. Next one. Wait, go back one. Left arrow. Yeah. Left arrow. Hit the left arrow for me. There we go. Uh, can you go back one more? Okay, this is the threat of arrest. This is the threat. We, we, we did go, we skipped a little bit. Under a separate provision of the Gun Control Act, any person who knowingly violates the provisions of the, gun, of the Brady Bill uh, or the, what does it say, federal? Well, the, no, the GCA. GCA, do you know what that is? It's the Gun Control Act of 1968, the federal gun control law. Amended by the Brady Bill. No, we'll go back, go back. What are you doing? Okay. Yeah. Anybody who knowingly violates that shall be fined under this title, imprisoned for no more than one year, or fined or both, okay? So we're looking at a $10,000 fine or a year in jail for just not going along with them. Should scare you a little bit that only seven of us objected to this. Yeah. There were a couple of sheriffs, one from Montana in particular, Sheriff Nixon. He says, I'm not filing any lawsuit. I'm just not going to do it. Tell them to come get me. That's what we should, all should have done, to be quite honest. You don't go to their courts and ask them permission to keep your oath of office. You don't ask anyone to keep your oath of office. You keep it. You do it. I think at the time this turned out to be the best thing, but I would never do it again. I'm not asking a federal court to keep my oath of office. Never. Never again. Okay, next one. Next one. Okay. Next one. Okay, good. Uh, this is what Reagan said about our tax system. Said that it deserves a rebellion. Okay. Keep going. Oh, I love this. Except I have to turn this this way because I don't have this memorized. Britain. This is right from Thomas Paine. Do you know what George Washington did to motivate and get his soldiers who were dying of dysentery, who had nothing to eat except fire cakes? Do you know what they were doing? They were, they were running. They crossed the Delaware running from the Redcoats. They went into Valley Forge hoping that they could regroup and get some strength and get some money and some clothes and some boots. In the middle of the winter, it's December, it's almost Christmas. And what does Washington do? He has his men read Thomas Paine's The American Crisis. 